Hello everyone, this is Ankit Jain. I welcome you all to my channel Tech Journey with Ankit. In today's quick tech session, we will explore how we can connect a Postman to our Salesforce org and perform the API testing with the help of Postman. Before we get to the integration part, let's try to understand what is Postman. So Postman is an API development environment tool with the help of which we can perform the testing of an API. If you have created any custom API, you can also test that custom API with the help of Postman. Moreover, you can also test the standard APIs provided by the Salesforce, right? We do have the documentation provided by the Salesforce, what all different APIs that are exposed by default from our org. But now most of the times we do get a query, how we gonna test that API. And that is where the Postman is very helpful. But before we perform this testing with the help of uh, before we go and perform the testing with the help of Postman, we have to go and integrate the Postman with the Salesforce. We have to set up the communication in between the both and after that we can perform the testing with the help of API. So we will deep dive into the steps, what all different steps that we should follow to perform those testing. Right? So with the help of Postman, we can go and perform the testing of the SOAP API, you can perform the testing of the PubSub API. For example, you can fire the platform events with the help of Postman, you can perform the bulk API testing as well as the REST API testing. Altogether, Salesforce have exposed more than 200 plus APIs that we can test with the help of Postman. Again, Postman is an open source collection, right? That Salesforce have provided on the Postman. You can create a clone of it and start it doing the changes to perform the testing as per your requirement. But before we go and perform those testing, let's try to understand what all different steps that we have to follow to do that. Again, in this session, I'll be using the web application of the Postman. Generally, Postman, it comes in the two different variation, one as the Windows application or a desktop application, and you can also use the web application. The advantage with the web application here is you do not have to perform any additional installation in your, on your machine. On the browser, you can log into the Postman and started using it. So let's try to understand what all different steps that we have to follow if we have to use the Postman to perform all those stuff. The first thing that we have to follow here is in the Salesforce, we have to go and configure these two different endpoints. So you have to navigate to the course session and under the course, you have to go and configure these two different endpoints. So let me show you one after the other, how we can do that. So let me go here, copy the first endpoint. Again, I will put this endpoint in the video description so that you guys can refer it from there. So here I am, now I'm navigating to my Salesforce org. Here I am looking for the course. Let me zoom this a bit. Right? And you have to go to the course. Click on new. And make sure that there are no additional spaces and click on save. After that, you have to go here and take the another endpoint. The difference between the two endpoint here is in the first endpoint, you can see that it is .com and in the second endpoint, it is .co. So make sure that we are configuring both these endpoints here. So again, I'm navigating to the course and adding another endpoint with the .co. So only this configuration is required at the Salesforce end. Now the remaining steps we have to do it at the Postman. In case you folks are using the Postman for the first time, make sure that you do sign up on the Postman like we sign up on the Google or any other web account. Similarly here also you have to go and create your own account. And once you have created that, this will be your landing page. In case you are already using the Postman and you do have your own workspace, you can also do that. But let's say we are starting from the scratch. So what you should do here is navigate to the workspace session and create the workspace. You can give any name to the workspace. So here I'm clicking on the workspace and creating the workspace. So let me take the option of next here and giving the name to the workspace as take journey with Ankit. Summary, you can add any other details that you want to add for this workspace. In case your workspace is shared, then you can share it with the team. In my scenario, I want to use this workspace for my personal purpose. So I'm making it as the personal and clicking on create. 
this is how you can go and create the workspace this is the first step that you have to follow you have to sign in to your postman account and after that you have to go and create the workspace after you have created the workspace now you have to create the fork of salesforce api collection so first you have to search for the salesforce api collection here now you can see that i am inside my workspace that is take journey with ankit so next time whenever you are coming up to the postman always make sure that you are coming to your workspace by selecting your workspace from here and after that what you have to do here is you have to go and search for the salesforce api so to do that here i am typing the salesforce and here you will get the option of salesforce platform api this is the library provided by the salesforce for the api testing so you have to download this library just have to go and select it from the postman search section and that library will be opened after that what you have to do as a part of next step is you have to go and create a clone of that library you can see that these are the different types of apis which are available as a part of this library right so whatever the api that you are interested in in case you guys are working on the commerce cloud or you are working on the data cloud or on the mule soft you can there are different types of apis that salesforce have exposed for the time being i am only dealing with the platform api so let me go and select the platform api and after that the next thing that we have to do here is we have to go and create a clone of it we cannot directly modify the apis provided by the salesforce we have to create a local repository of it and after that we can do it to do that you can see that there are three dots available here you have to click on these three dots create a fork and you can give any name to the fork let me give the name to the fork again as uh, salesforce api fork right so i am creating this fork under this workspace that i have created and after that i am clicking on the fork collection so i have created the clone of salesforce platform api and created a clone of it so my step 3 is also done now the next thing that we have to do here is we have to make the connection in between the postman as well as the salesforce again it's very easy to do that because salesforce have provided a pre configured library we just have to follow the repeated steps to do it so first thing that you have to do here is you have to make sure that you are selecting the parent folder here whatever the parent folder that is you do have like for example in my case that the parent folder is salesforce platform api so we have to make sure that we are selecting this parent folder after that navigate to the authorization <clears throat> here the type of authentication that we are doing is the oauth 2.0 authentication right again you can see that all these values are pre populated you don't have to do anything here you just have to click on this button and get new access token in case you are already logged in inside your org you will directly get this window to uh, to ask for the access here you can see the username that you can use for the access in case you are not logged in in your org then it will ask you to go and perform the login in your org and after that provide the access in my scenario i am already logged in in my org so i am directly getting this option to allow the access so we have to make sure that we are clicking on this allow button so you can see that my authentication is complete and after that you can go and click on this proceed button once you click on this proceed button you will be on this landing page before you go and close this page or perform any action the first thing that you have to do here without a fail is you have to get the instance url from here i will show you what we have to do with this instance url but make sure that you are copying this instance url and putting it on your notepad for now okay so i am copied this instance url from here and after that i am making sure that i am clicking on this button that is use token so i clicked on the use token here now you can see that the token is added so whatever the copied url that i do have i can navigate to the variable section under the underscore endpoint right for this variable we have to provide the current value whatever the url that we have copied the instance url so here this is the instance url that i have copied and i have pasted that instance url under the current value we, another thing that we have to make sure that most of the times i do observe people generally forget to save these changes so you have to make sure that you have to go and press the control s to save these changes right unless and until you are not saving these changes these changes will not be effective so this is how you can go and perform the authorization again as we are using the concept of oauth here this authorization will go invalid after some time so you have to make sure that you are putting the you are doing the authorization again and again whenever you are using it so now we have to go here and uh, expand the let's go and test this api whether the connection is successful or not for the time being i am using the um, 
let me look for any quick API that we can use. So I'm expanding the rest folder and for the time being, I'm using this limits API. With the help of this limits API, we can get the governor limits of our org. You can see that the endpoint that we have configured is coming up here. Again, the version is picking up as expected from all this environment variable. All these variables are referred as the environment variables of the uh, URL. You can see that here we do have all this environment variable from here, all the things are coming up, right? Now let me go and execute this API and we can validate the response. You can see that we are getting all the governor limits of our GOG. Not only the governor limits, you can perform n number of operations here. For example, if you want to execute the query, you can also go and execute the query from here. Right? Here you can go and write down the query. You can see that by default they have also given an example. You can execute the fields all from account order by limit 5. Right? So you go and click on send. You will get the 5 different accounts from your org. Right? This is how you can use the JSON to perform the testing. Very soon I will be releasing the different videos on the integration. That time very frequently we will be using this postman tool. So make sure that you are configuring the postman tool and get that connected with your org. In case folks, you do have any questions, any queries, please let me know in the chat section. Thank you. Have a good time. Bye-bye.